Nintendo has blessed us with a whole family of awesome consoles. The NES is the supportive father, the SNES is the better looking mother, the Nintendo 64 is the confident older brother, the Game Boy is the innocent younger sister, and the Wii as the retarded cousin. But who's missing in this happy household? Why, the Malcolm in the middle, the most pushed aside Nintendo console of all time, the Game Sphere. <laughs> no, not the Game Sphere, the Game Sphere. No, the Game Sphere. The Game Sphere. The Game Sphere. All joking aside, I'm talking about the GameCube. This thing was awesome to me when I was growing up because I never had one. I only got to play it whenever I went to my friend's house, and most of the time I didn't even get to play. Nevertheless, I still had a whole bunch of fun watching my friends play these games. So long overdue, here's the top five best GameCube games. So let's do this, come on, let's go, yeah! Number five. This wouldn't be a tuxedo mod list unless I started with one of the most underrated games I ever played, Beyond Good and Evil. When my friends and I go on nostalgia journeys, we always list off games like Super Mario 64, Donkey Kong Country, Mario Kart. I always list off Beyond Good and Evil. This game wasn't GameCube specific, however I liked it best on the GameCube. Unfortunately I had to grab somebody else's PlayStation 2 gameplay off YouTube because I don't actually have this game. To me, the controls seemed better on the GameCube for some strange reason. Beyond Good and Evil is a game about a photojournalist, wait for it, who fights an alien invasion. The controls are smooth, and the fighting mechanic is something that reminds me of Ratchet and Clank, which is a good thing. I remember when my friend decided to purchase it, and sitting on the couch next to him, watching himself immerse in Beyond Good and Evil's environment is something so nostalgic for me. When I got to play the game myself, I instantly fell in love with it the second I stepped into its colorful world. The game has excellent story pacing, great visuals, good voice acting, and a great soundtrack. As a fan of action-adventure and puzzle-slash-stealth games, I highly recommend the antics of Beyond Good and Evil has to offer. Number 4. You know, sometimes life is tough. Just rolls around at the speed of sound. Sometimes, you've got places to go. You have to follow your rainbow. Listen to me though. Just listen. You can't stick around. You have to keep moving on. Okay? Guess what lies ahead? There's only one way to find out. In case you didn't get my extremely stupid reference, I'm talking about none other than Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. For those of you who know my gaming taste, you know that over the years, I've grown to hate Sonic. I don't know what it is, but ever since Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, the Sonic series has spawned some of the worst games I ever played, with a couple of exceptions like Sonic Generations. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle was nothing other than fun. Although the Sonic slash Shadow and the Tail slash Eggman stages were a blast, I found the most enjoyment looking for treasure in the Knuckles slash Rogue stages. The cherry atop the cake, however, was the Chow Garden. You raised little creatures called Chows, and for some damn reason, it was so much fun. It was exciting to see your Chow grow up and evolve into either a light or a dark Chow. For the amount of story-driven games I play, sometimes it's exciting to change it up to something that just has a bunch of fast-paced action. Number 3. I love Super Smash Bros. Melee. Number 2. Wait. You actually want me to say something about Super Smash Bros. Melee? <sighs> Fine. Super Smash Bros. was a franchise I always loved since the very beginning. In my opinion, the games get better with each installment. The difference, however, was that Melee was a bigger improvement to the original Super Smash Bros. than Brawl was to Melee. I remember the hype for this game all too well. A game that everyone loved on the N64 was being updated with twice as many characters and twice as many stages with better graphics. Oh man, did I want this game as a kid. Something about testing out your skill against your friends using the characters you grew up with in a battle to see who comes out on top was an awesome experience to me. Honestly, it's hard to explain how fun this game was for me. And really, I couldn't see myself refusing to put it on this list. I mean, come on. Super Smash Bros. Melee. Everybody knows this game's awesome. Super Smash Bros. Melee! Super Smash Bros. Number two. Sometimes the world is so dirty, you just gotta clean up, if you know what I mean. So that's exactly what this next game does. Super Mario Sunshine is my favorite Mario game hands down. You can say that I have bad taste or that I don't know what gaming is, but all I know is that I love this game. Sunshine had some of the best pacing in a game I ever played at the time, and I felt totally immersed in the world cleaning up the mess that Evil made. Sunshine seemed like the obvious path to take after the success of Super Mario 64, however this game isn't as universally loved as 64 was. I never understood this because I didn't see what wasn't to like. 
I understand that this game didn't feel anything like Super Mario 64, but to me, that's not a bad thing. It seems like the masses get mad for Nintendo changing it up, but also get mad at them for not changing anything. But I guess everyone has their own opinion about video games, and damn it, I love Super Mario Sunshine! Super Mario Sunshine felt lighthearted and didn't seem to take itself too seriously, which I appreciated. And the number one best GameCube game is... Wait, what is it? Seriously, what the, f the hell is it? I had it written down somewhere. What? Where, where is, where is it? It's not here. No, where, where, where is? Where is? <laughs> Wait a second, I think I remembered. It's as if I was awoken by the wind. Awoken? Wind? Wind Waker! I was debating whether to put Wind Waker or Twilight Princess in this spot. I know I'm caving into the mainstream by picking Wind Waker, but I seriously think that this was the best game on the GameCube. I enjoyed every minute, no, every second I played this game. It took a long time before I got into the Zelda franchise, but I'm glad I did because I got to play Wind Waker. The game borrows a lot of its core gameplay mechanics from Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Ocarina and Majora were masterpieces, so I don't see the problem of mirroring one of the things that made those games so great. This game looks and feels great. I love it when cell shading is used well, and it is used well in Wind Waker. A good portion of Wind Waker is played battling monsters out on sea while you travel from island to island. This allows for the game to mask loading times while you approach the shores of each island. I think that we can all collectively agree that loading screens suck because they take you out of the action of the game. Wind Waker feels smooth, as if you the player were experiencing the journey along with Link. Speaking of Link, something that upset some hardcore Zelda fans was that they added a lot of emotion to Link in this game, whereas in the other games he was more of a protagonist that the player chose him to be. I understand why this kind of change would upset some people, but to me, it makes Link feel more human and relatable, which makes me like him more. When I like the protagonist, I tend to like the game. This is why I don't like a lot of the Sonic games, because a lot of the characters are asses and seem like people I really wouldn't want to get to know. All in all, Wind Waker is an excellent game and should be considered by anyone who's starting to like the franchise. Well that was that, whatever that was. Thank you guys for sticking around this long in this video, it means I didn't bore you too much. Recently I got a huge jump in subscribers based on one of the other videos I made. I wanted to thank each and every one of you guys who subscribed to me. It's... I love you. Sorry for that little period where I didn't just post like anything for like a month. I had some other things to ca take care of at school and stuff like that. I'm trying to work out a schedule where I can post both animations and these kind of videos every week. So that's happening. Anyway, I'll stop talking and uh... Just gonna ask you guys to subscribe to join the mob. Why? Oh yeah, credits. <laughs>